Welcome to Read Ancient Languages, I'm Dr. Fausto Labruto. Today we travel to the University of Cambridge in England where this manuscript is stored. This manuscript is called the Codex Bezai. A codex is a book made of parchment sheets. The Codex Bezai dates from the 5th century and is one of the most ancient extant copies of the New Testament and it is bilingual because it is written both in ancient Greek and in Latin. The importance of this codex in the history of Christianity cannot be understated. Codex Bezai is famous for having many differences from and expansion on most other New Testament manuscripts. I think this requires some explanation. As you probably know, we don't have the original copy of any New Testament book. What we do have are copies of copies, the earliest written over 200 years after the Gospels were written. There are over a thousand manuscripts of the New Testament in the libraries and museums of the world and not two copies are exactly identical in their text. Statistically, the most common textual differences between the two ancient manuscripts of the New Testament are errors in copying and tiny linguistic differences in how a word was spelled. However, less commonly, textual differences appear which have been inserted with a purpose for example, to defend a theological position or to make a political statement. These differences could then spread from copy to copy following the different paths of cultural influence of the early church, and philologists today study the linguistic and textual differences between the different codexes to try to trace back the development of the early Catholic Church. Among the early copies of the New Testament, the Codex Bezae is so unique and its text of Luke and Acts is so distinctive that it has its own name, the Western text. That's because there's evidence that early Christians in the Western Roman Empire had copies of Luke and Acts that looked like Codex Bezai. Today, I'd like to focus on a page of Codex Bezai from the Greek text of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, verse 5, which we see here zoomed in. First of all, I have to make some paleographic considerations. Like uh, any early Middle Age manuscript, this text is written in majuscule, all capital letters. Manuscule, or lowercase letters, do not appear in manuscripts in ancient Greek until the 9th century. The writing system is a scriptio continua, or continuous writing, which means there are no separation spaces between the words, as in the fashion of the age. The book hand used is called Anshal. The Onshal is the most common script used between 4th and 8th century by Greek scribes. It is characterized by simple, mostly rounded letters, one separated from the next, with rare prolongations above and below the line. All in all, a very easy to read book hand. In this particular text, punctuation, diacritics, that means accents and breathings, are entirely absent. Let's now transcribe the text into modern fonts and read it. Te aute emera, te asamenos tina, ergazomenon to sabato, eipen auto, antrope, eimen oidas tipoies, macarios ei, eide me oidas, epicataratos, kai parabates ei tu nomo. Which translates, on that day, seeing someone working on the Sabbath, he, Jesus, told him, if man, if you know what you do, blessed are you, but if you do not know, you are cursed and a transgressor of the law. If you are familiar with the Gospel of Luke, you'll probably know that this incident and these words pronounced by Jesus are not reported in any standard version of the Bible. There are many examples of added lines in the early manuscripts of the New Testament, but the reason I chose to show this particular one is because it can be neatly connected to a theological controversy. Sure enough, in the Gospels there are examples in which Jesus rebukes the Pharisees for being too strict about the observance of the law of the Sabbath, which prohibited Jews from performing any form of work on the day of rest. We see this in all the Synoptic Gospels in which Jesus points out that one should be forgiven for performing work on the day of the Sabbath if there is a just cause for performing work. And Jesus goes even further to proclaim that the Sabbath was made for man and not man made for the Sabbath. However, nowhere in the Synoptic Gospels does Jesus come to the point of blessing someone who works on the Sabbath. 
which is precisely what this passage uh, teaches us. If you know what you do, blessed are you. Scholars today believe that the reason for adding this passage to the Gospel was to push a precise political agenda. Based on uh, literally parallels between uh, this particular addition to the Gospel of Luke, which we see in the Codex Beza and the writings of Church Fathers, especially from the 4th century, the Sabbath worker passage may have originated in the throes of a Christian polemic against the Jewish practices of Sabbath observance. Christianity originates from Judaism. Today, Judaism and Christianity are two distinct religions with totally different practices. However, at the time of this polemic, Christians were not united about what to do of Jewish practices. In other words, some Christian communities, especially in the Eastern Roman Empire, believed that they should still keep the Jewish law, such as not working the Sabbath, while others, mainly in the Western Roman Empire, believed that these laws should belong to the Jews only. So adding this passage to the sacred scripture would send a clear message to the reader that they would be blessed if they would consciously take distance from the laws of the Jewish tradition. So, in conclusion, the Codex Bezai is an ancient manuscript of huge importance for the history of Catholicism. Hidden in its pages, written in ancient Greek, there are many details which at first sight may go unobserved. However, when they are carefully analyzed, they will give us insight on the controversies of early Christianity. Today, the Codex Bezai can be admired at the Cambridge University Library in England. Thank you for listening to Read Ancient Languages. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for updates.